Hello students, welcome again. Students, when we study postmodern literature or when we study the literature of the 1950s or 60s, we come across this term movement poetry. So today I want to explain what this movement poetry is and what are the important features or characteristics of movement poetry in English literature. So now let's begin. See, this movement poetry was actually in sharp contrast to the previous poetry which was popularized by T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, Dylan Thomas, Sylvia Plath and so many other poets who were writing in the first half of the 20th century. So, if you examine the whole history of English literature, if you examine 20th century English literature, you see this contrast. In the first half of the 20th century, we have one group of poets who have written modern poetry and in the second half of the 20th century, we have another group of poets who are known as movement poets and they reacted against the first half of poetry. Okay, And this term movement poetry was first of all coined by J.D. Scott who was the editor of the literary magazine The Spectator and this term was coined in 1954. Okay, Now the poetry which was becoming popular in 1950s and 60s, okay, it was in contrast to the poetry written in 1920s and 40s. Okay, like in 1920s to 40s, what po whom do we see? We see Ezra Pound, we see Dylan Thomas, we have T.S. Eliot, we have Sylvia Plath and these people, okay. But in the, uh, in 1950s, we have some other poets who reacted against that previous modern poetry. This movement poetry is also known as postmodern poetry and in this movement poetry we have some very important poets like Philip Larkin, Kingsley Amis, Elizabeth Jennings, Tom Gunn, John Wayne, DJ Anwright and Robert Conquest. Okay, so these this poets, okay, they made a group and this group of poets uh, is known as movement poets and their poetry is movement poetry. Now let's try to understand how this movement poetry is different from the uh, modern poetry of T.S. Eliot, Ezra Pound and Thomas Dylan. Okay. Uh, so number one, you know this movement poetry, it did not believe in the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings which was accepted, which is found in the poets of romantic revival. Okay, so this movement poetry was a reaction against the spontaneous outbursts of feelings and emotions. Okay, here there is no emotionalism, here there is no sentimentalism, here there is intellectualism, right? It appeals, this movement poetry appeals to the head of the reader, uh, not to the heart of the reader. Number two, okay, here this movement poetry, they, these poets, they try to present the harsh reality of the postmodern life after the Second World War. You know, after the Second World War, there was much destruction, there was much uh, frustration and they accepted this condition, okay with an open mind, with a broad mind, they accepted this reality and they tried to present this naked reality, harsh reality in their poetry. Okay? They, they, they accepted that world, this world which we are living in is a materialistic world and fundamentally, basically, originally this world is an evil world. You have to accept it whether you believe it or not. Okay, you have to live with this naked reality. They did not even lament 
for the loss of everything you know this is the difference that you see between the modern poets of the first half of the 20th century and the post modern poets of the second half of the 20th century what a difference in the first half of the 20th century if you read the wasteland written by t s eliot you know you find that poets are they are lamenting their sorrow their frustration and pessimism okay but in the second half of the 20th century poets no longer lament for anything okay they have accepted the reality so this is the difference that you see another thing is that the moment poets they they more they preferred writing poetry in traditional metrical style okay you think about the 19th century poets 17th century poets 18th century poets they used the rhythmic metrical pattern uh, in writing poetry so this movement poets they reacted against modern poetry why because in modern poetry what do you see you see free verse okay the modern poets preferred writing in free verse they did not follow any pattern or form or style or syntax okay they were free they were not bound but if you come to the post modern poetry movement poetry of 1950s you find proper metrical rhythm and traditional styles of writing poetry okay uh, so uh, free verse you find in uh, modern poetry but metrical verse metrical poetry you find in movement poetry moreover these movement poets they neglected the over experimentation of writing poetry you know this is also the difference between the modern and the post modern poets in among the modern poets there were so many experiments they were doing while writing poetry new forms new uh, genres were created by these poets of the modern po modern times but in post modern times in 1950s and 1960s you know they mainly focused on the simplicity of expression on the clarity of expression they also rejected too much figurative language and too many allusions and references to the ancient literature ancient mythologies and philosophies you read t s eliot you find too many references uh, to the indian philosophies to the mythical uh, stories of greece okay but if you read philip larkin if you if you read 1950s poetry movement poetry you do not find too many allusions you do not find even highly ornamental language they believe in simplicity of expression instead of using figurative language they preferred writing in colloquial speech colloquial speech means they they used day to day la language of the people the language of the common man was mainly used by these poets in movement poetry so these are some uh, six to seven features important features of a uh, movement poetry philip larkin was the founding leader of this movement poetry in 1950s and in my next video lecture i am going to discuss the contribution of philip larkin to english poetry i am going to discuss philip larkin as one of the major movement poets of english literature but by then but so far i am taking your leave i hope this video is useful to you if you really think it is useful please share it among your friends and classmates thank you for watching thank you